Hi, my name is Phil. I like talking about politics. And in this video, I'd like to use my little look at how the Brexit media is spinning things to uh, absolutely facepalm like never before at an economic claim in the Daily Mail that is laughable even for them. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So uh, Brexiteers and dodgy maths go together like chicken and rosemary, really. I suppose the first example was the message on the side of the bus in 2016, the famous £350 million a week that Boris Johnson said we give to the EU and we should give to the NHS instead. And it's like, well, I mean, quite apart from ignoring the stunning return we got for our membership fees, those weren't our membership fees. Those were massively inflated on what we were actually paying. Even at the time, journalists and the Office for National Statistics said that Boris Johnson was lying. But the dodgy maths has continued in order to try and pretend that a huge drag to our economic prospects can be turned into a boost. Some Brexiteers know that the time for this is pretty much at an end because we've got the real figures now. It's very much a decline. But some of them persist. It's like, oh, we can turn it around, we can turn it around. I've seen an increasing number, though, saying that, that Brexit really wasn't about the economic benefits. There are quite a lot of that recently. Indeed, no. I accept that people voted for Brexit for a range of different outcomes. It wasn't all economic. I get that. You know, racism and xenophobia are not economic. But I'd be willing to bet that the vast majority of those who voted for Brexit would not have considered their prime motivator to be worth it stacked against the knowledge that it would crush our economy and their living standards. But when it comes to dodgy claims and even dodgy mass, the Daily Mail has actually surpassed itself this time. A few days ago, it ran the headline, Business chiefs say turbocharging exports will give Britain a £500 billion Brexit windfall and create millions more well-paid jobs. Now, I'm going to pick out a few key points of interest here because this article doesn't just highlight dodgy maths, but dodgy reporting, deliberately designed to mislead. So the first thing is to consider that term business chiefs. Now, this puts you in mind of the country's top CEOs, the captains of some of our largest and most successful brands. But the tabloids are not above inflating the qualifications of people who are willing to say what they want them to say. Like, if someone with a flower shop in a village in the Shire says something that the Mail wants to report on, they are quite happy to call them a business chief. But there is another type of business chief, which is what they're referring to here, which is a lobby group who are keen to push particular policies on the government. The Global Britain Commission is what is being referenced in this article, it appears, and it is headed up by one Dr Liam Fox, a politician. But was he a successful CEO before becoming a politician? No, nah, that doctor in the title refers to his medical training. He is what is known in the business as a rabid Brexiteer and like many of his kind, forms think tanks in order to lobby government by producing reports, all nice and glossy, all clever sounding names to make it sound like they are researched and written by serious academics. But that's not just me saying that. Like, I'm not exactly proving to a critical but neutral viewer that this particular lobby group is not qualified to talk about how it can use Brexit to boost our economy just because it happens to be headed up by a politician who knows nothing of economics. Don't worry, I shall get onto that. It's absolutely worth the wait because the headline talks about, and this is the crucial bit, a £500 billion Brexit windfall. Now, it doesn't say over what period of time we're going to get that £500 billion, but that doesn't matter. Any windfall at all would be welcome news right now. So let's lead into how they arrive at that figure. Now, I'm going to pick on something that's less impressive in terms of the error, but, but get into the payout of the most hilarious part of their brain fart. The first is the statement, just under the headline, that we should export more goods. That's what this... This lobby group, that's what this think tank, these Brexit chiefs have come up with, these business chiefs have said, we need to export more goods. Really? Oh my goodness, thank goodness we've got these business chiefs. We didn't think of that. Oh yeah, makes sense, doesn't it? If we sell more, we'll make more money. Oh, but hang on, just one small problem. Brexit has meant huge trade barriers with our nearest and most important market. And this nearest and most important market also happens to be a market whose wealth and size doesn't actually exist really around the world. 
You know, what people seem to fail to understand is you can't just say, oh, we'll ignore European trade and go somewhere else. Where? Where else has the money that Europe does? You know, I used rather more coherent maths a few weeks ago to show that if we got the equivalent of the Australia trade deal, that's our first genuine post-Brexit trade deal. If we got a deal as good as that with every country around the world outside of the EU, of course, that still wouldn't compensate for the GDP loss from our reduced trade from Brexit with the EU. So this £500 billion boost immediately would require better trade deals with the rest of the world, much better in fact, than we have with Australia. But the Australia trade deal was billed as being fantastic. So how are we going to do better with the rest of the world? But then we get on to the best bit, worth the wait, promise. I'm going to quote it word for word as well, because it's spectacular. This is what it says. If Britain increased exports per capita to match those of Germany, the country would record additional £474 billion each year. So now we're knowing you know, this half a billion, this, this half a trillion pound rather is each year. Good, okay. But I'll read it again because it's worth it. If Britain increased exports per capita to match those of Germany, the country would record additional £474 billion each year. So they're basing this half a trillion quid figure on emulating the level of exports of Germany, a country with a much stronger manufacturing base that sits at the heart of Europe, in the EU. I'm sure you've already spotted the small flaws in this plan, but let me point them out anyway for those at the back. Germany has not just erected trade barriers with one of the two richest continents on the planet. And when it comes to the other, North America, it's not even like the UK has some advantage compared to Germany. It's not like, oh yeah, well Germany can trade with Europe more easily, but we can trade with North America more easily. No, we can't. In fact, the UK has no greater access to any market on earth, aside from Britain, than, than the EU has. And, and then once again, you know, I have to, I have to separate out Britain from the UK again, as Brexit requires so often. Because get the, I, I can never skirt by this aspect of Brexit without pointing it out because it's just ridiculous. When it comes to market access, consider this, this is what Brexit's done. When it comes to market access, Germany can export goods to Northern Ireland, a part of the UK, more easily than Britain can. That's what Brexit has given us. Not only have we reduced trade with many of the richest countries on earth, including three of the top ten in the EU, but never mind individual countries, that's not what we, the single market represents the second largest market on earth and not a distant second either. But Brexit is so ridiculous that we even raised trade barriers inside the UK. The UK has a harder time exporting to another bit of the UK than Germany does. Do people who still support Brexit know what they look like to people who think about these things? That they actually think to themselves, what must I look like? But anyway, all that aside, this £500 billion, or £474, I won't split hairs, this £500 billion Brexit boost, this half a trillion quid, there's no plan attached to it. It doesn't say, well, what we should do is look at what Germany does, how it organises its economy, and do more things like that. I mean, even if it did... I would still say that our Brexit trade barriers would stop us being as successful, even if we try to model ourselves on, on Germany's economic model. But it doesn't even say that. It just says, if we were as good at Germany, uh, at selling things abroad, then we'd get a boost to our economy of half a trillion quid. Have you ever heard anything more ridiculous? Let me explain what they're saying in individual terms. So, Let's say someone is a, is a retail worker, bog standard retail job, you know, on the tills, whatever. But they're struggling to make ends meet. I mean, they're in a Tory run Brexit Britain. Of course they are. So they go to an advisor. They, they, they ask this independent advisor who's offered to give them some advice for free, how they can boost their household income. I'm struggling to make ends meet. I really could do with a boost in my household income. What do you advise? And the advisor says, well, if you could just earn as much as a consultant surgeon, then you'd get a significant boost to your income. 
That is literally what they're saying. If only we could sell as much as Germany, we'd get a boost to our economy. I mean, why not go the whole hog? Why not say if we could only b sell as much as, say, the United States? Or maybe the United States per capita is not that great. I don't know. I didn't work it out. But, but why write an article so obviously brain dead? Because they take the view that their readers, after years of lobotomizing gaslighting, will just read this group of business chiefs, says that we can boost our economy by 500 billion pounds, and that it would be thanks to Brexit. There's no link in the article about how it links to Brexit. They don't dwell on the fact that this group of business chiefs seems to be led by a doctor who didn't even work as a doctor for very long. They don't dwell on the fact that there's no plan for achieving it or that it is based on doing as well as the country at the very heart of the EU. No, they just see average incomes could rise by £2,000. And that sounds appealing. Who wouldn't want a £2,000 pay rise? I mean, Jacob Rees-Mogg's just have a £35,000 pay rise for a job that's even easier. And the thing is, even that £2,000 extra maths is dodgy. This whole thing about it would create this many jobs or you'd get this much more pay. That's dodgy as well. Because what that is, the way they've done that calculation, it's how they always do these calculations. It's assuming that this boost to the economy trickles down to ordinary workers who would share in the dividend. But we know this never happens. The trickle-down theory has been dismissed by uh, economists in the same way that electroconvulsive therapy has been dismissed by psychologists. Doesn't happen, doesn't work. But there we are. Even given that I regularly review Brexit articles in particular from this media outlet, this one, it actually took me by surprise. I have to admit, I fail to fully appreciate just where the average Daily Mail, Daily Mail reader is in terms of the tripe that you can persuade them to swallow. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.